Hey everyone, JJ at microwavefutures.com. I want to show you guys how I look at markets and people who trade size look at markets. Um, when a market sells off, how do we know where it's going to sell off to? How do we know the nature of the sell off? Um, it's that whole process of finding a bottom for long enough to get long as supply runs out, the supply goes up, we can sell into that strength, which is created by a lack of supply, right? Price moves higher when it, you know, runs out of supply at lower prices, price seeks higher to go find those sellers who are willing to sell. So here we have a liquidation, um, you know, the market does some nice distributions, you know, on the way up, nice sideways distribution, sideways distribution. Then it comes back into this distribution because it ran out of buyers and then it drops again. Now I'm just going to play this. It's at 60 times speed. So just in keep this video, not, you know, long and boring. Let's try and keep it short. So I'm going to push play. You're going to see the market now come into this balance area. Right. And what's going on now is right at certain levels, at certain levels, the market, if it breaks that level, the people who are using that level as a stop will start coming out. So it holds that level because shorts come in, the people who are short on the way up, they come in and they starting to bid here and to cover. So they start buying first. They're always the first to buy, right? They buy here, stabilize price. They see a big seller. Ooh, drop the price, right? Drop the price again. So now we're going to let this trade. And you're going to see there's two-sided trades on both sides of 55, 56. Sorry, 53, 56 quarter, 53, 62 quarter. Sorry. So you're going to see there's a seller here and there are buyers here. And what that action going back and forth is, it's letting the market clean itself out. We've got trap long selling and the people who are long down here under 5346, they're selling to outcompete those longs. Then they just stop selling when it comes one, you know, close to one of their cost basis areas, market drifts back up and they, you know, they sell into it. So they're both sides of this market and they flip from the bid to the offer as the market goes over 5360. So if you'll watch, and this is called being both sides. Now, when a large size order comes into this box, it's going to break out of the box, right? I can't remember what it does here. Let's see if it breaks up or down. See how it breaks down? Comes back into that box. When it holds the box, the target is the top of the box. Breaks above it, right? A little distribution here right? Good distribution. Oh, it's on sale again, right? So we broke out of the box. It started to distribute as soon as we got close to this cost basis. These sellers started to step in and they push price lower. So your target is the bottom of the box. Boom, there it is. So the trades we love are based on this what you guys would call consolidation. We love when the market looks below and fails. Then we go long here, got a place to put your stop, got a target, right? And you can always get rid of some product here. And if it moves up higher, you can anticipate that their seller is going to come out of the woodwork here. So let's say you bought four contracts here. You sold two or three here and you hold one, boom, you're out. Nicely done. The next trade is the look above and fail. So when the market looks above and comes back in, this is a tougher trade. Sometimes because the sellers, you never know when that seller is going to come in. It's So when you see that candle hit, fail to hit 62 and three quarters, you're short. Now your stop is going to be, you know, if you're feeling, you know, if you're feeling rich, your stop is up there at 66. And then you're looking for your target sorry, 66, sorry. And then your target is 56 and three quarters, like it just did. So it's the look below, come up, fail to hit that. You hit it short. You're not going to get 62 and three quarters, but say you hit 61 and three quarters, 62, right? You get a fast trade. 
right? You got to practice it and then stop up there, put in a bid at 56, three quarters, 57 and cover, right? Now it looks below again, right? Still got some selling and now boom, right back up to the top. Do you see how the market goes back and forth through this box? Because the large size traders, they see a big buyer. Oh, come on. We'll see how much they'll pay. And then you sell it back down, right? And this process just keeps going and going and going while you clean up the market. And then eventually what happens, right? After a few of these moves, you're going to see eventually we're going to come out and we're going to take out that level and accept over it. And once we accept over that level, right? Once we accept over that level, that means, ah, the position is underneath us and we can sell it. But as soon as sellers start to compete, we come back in, but we don't come back to cost basis. This is our cost basis until we completely run out of buyers and have to put it on sale. But as long as people keep coming into the market and wanting to buy, oh, look, there's, there's an entry. Kind of hit the middle, didn't we? To the tick and right back up. And that cleans out. So these are all trades that we can set up. We also have a great thing where we take the cost basis and we double it. So you can double it to the top and double it to the bottom because all you're doing is marking up inventory, right? Into a profit zone. And when you see that happening, you have decent targets. So you know, okay, if, I, if it looks below here and fails, boom, it's going to come right up to the top. You can take those trades especially in a breakout zone on a look below and fail. That's nice. You know, you're 64 long. You put your stop down there under 62, sell some at 68 and three quarters. And if it doesn't hit 74, you bail. You put your sell orders in, the market goes, takes you out and, uh, and you're done. And that's a nice big zone from 62 to 74. Even if you get half of that zone on three to five contracts, once you practice this trade, um, it'll, it'll pay your bills. You know, this just trade will pay your bills. The look above and fail, the look below and fail. They're both based on solid business principles, lack of supply or too much supply. So there's no supply. We go along, we become the supply. We act as a wholesaler, grab some supply, sell it into the retail buying. When there's too much retail selling, they start to sell wholesale sales. We take the short one, we spot the seller like right there and right there. And this way we can, manage our targets and um, works really well. It works really well. The beautiful thing about these two trades is they're scalable in time and size. You can do this on, this is a one minute chart. You can do it. It's on a 15 minute, half an hour, 60 daily. Um, you have large traders who have big zones. They'll do a look above and fail, look below and fail. Um, we saw it happen this week. I'll do another video on that, but this, trade once you understand the mechanics of the trade the mechanics are based on business nothing else inventory and order flow it's a market right that's why we don't call it the stock hot tub or the futures hot tub it's a market the market is there to take inventory right and distribute inventory as at a profit right and then when nobody wants to buy just like walmart we put it on sale right back down to where we paid for it. That's the cost basis. Simple concepts that will keep you from buying tops and shorting bottoms, especially when a market is, you know, in balance. Um, right now on, on the hourly chart, we were on a, we were in a daily balance and um, trading both sides of that was nice. So I'll show you that later in the next video, I'll do a little bit longer time frame. Do it on an hourly and then show you how to do it on a day time frame. I'm JJ, microefutures.com. If you want to learn how to trade with good old fashioned common sense, practical trades, no fancy, you know, whimsical stuff based on business, good risk management, because the key to retail trading is having money to trade when you actually know what you're doing. So we got to keep that money in your pockets until you have the skill and the execution experience. And it's just training, folks. We train you how to, you know, we train the stress out of you. You have certain protocols to follow. You, 
those protocols become ingrained in you through practice, good habits. You know, trading is just a series of good habits put together, you know, good financial habits where you actually respect your trading capital, right? Come learn all these old fashioned things from an old guy at microefutures.com. Been doing this 31 years. Love every day of it. Hope you guys are having a great weekend and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.